woman would come. This is the happiest day of my life. When you're hanging out at home after a long day, some rounds of Smash Bros can really make you feel better. Everyone knows the name. It's a celebration of video games throughout the past few decades, and it's constantly evolved over the years. You don't really have to be big on fighting stuff to be interested in Smash, because this is for anyone who just wants to have a good time. There's a franchise for every kind of player. Now, the concept of bringing a bunch of different characters in one place isn't only seen in Smash, but this is still widely recognized as the biggest video game crossover out there. And now I ask the question, what happens when Cartoon Network decides to enter this unfamiliar territory? Absolute chaos. For anyone who spent their childhoods watching TV, there's a pretty good chance they loved all the special parts of classic Cartoon Network. A wide variety of characters would canonically be in the same universe. Through special bumpers and marketing, they interacted with each other, writing home the idea that they were real people. It was great, and of course this was present in other forms of media too. If we head over to the world of video games, there's an insane amount of potential for our favorite cartoon heroes. You could put them all together in a crossover just like Smash Bros, and well, that's exactly what happens. In a different world, in a different dimension, there's about to be a serious showdown. Prepare yourself for Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. In 2011, Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion was revealed to the world on 3DS, and it promised a fighting experience like no other. Unless your name relates in any way to the words Super and Smash and Bros. Okay, this is a ripoff, but who knows? Maybe the fact that it's Cartoon Network will bring a fresh take on the formula. The box art gives just a small taste of what we can expect. Samurai Jack getting ready to pummel Chowder and Blue. Ben about to demolish Buttercup. Flapjack and Grimm having their eyes locked on Dexter. Many of our favorite characters from several eras of the channel were here and ready to have some fun, but that's not exactly how things went down. You see, this game wasn't well received at all. What happened though? Why did the Cartoon Eric Smash Bros fail to live up to its true potential? Let's talk about it. Okay, so at its heart, this is a fighting game, obviously. However, for anyone looking for a more worthwhile experience, there's an entire story mode packed in, very much in the same way as Subspace Emissary from Super Smash Bros Brawl. You start off playing as Ben 10, and there's an evil entity disrupting various Cartoon Network worlds. As you traverse through these different universes, new characters are slowly added to the roster. Before you can actually play as the new fighters, you'll have to face their shadow selves in a battle to the death! Each of them have their own unique movesets that relate to who they are. This game follows a pretty similar path of collecting heroes and working together to stop a greater evil. Ultimatrix detects dimensional disturbance. Ah, oh, snap! Now, wait just a minute. Just from looking at the story alone, it's easy to realize that this was doing the bare minimum. There wasn't a whole lot of experimentation for something different, the devs just stuck with what worked. But what exactly makes Punch Time Explosion a much worse Smash Bros ripoff than it could have been? Well, for one thing, the fighting. You know it's bad news when the actual core mechanic of the game is clunky, but that's just how this is, and I really wish I could change it. While going on the multiverse adventures, you're gonna have to fight through a bunch of enemies to keep moving forward. The problem is that it just feels off. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but you don't get any real satisfaction from punching your enemies into next year. In order to win, you can just keep spamming a certain powerful move and you'll basically get no punishment. Super Smash Bros on the other hand, works well because it legitimately feels good to play. It feels like you're actually there on stage, going head to head with your opponent. It's fun and exciting, but then go back to Punch Time Explosion and it's just this. Oh yeah, can we please talk about the ultimate moves? You build up to them with a special meter, and it's like a final smash, but why on earth does every character's move last 10 to 20 seconds? Normally, I'd say that's okay, except you're not able to skip it any time it happens, meaning the battle just comes to a complete standstill for that amount of time. Do you know how much fun I could be having on Smash Bros in the 15 seconds that I waste here? A lot more than this.
But what about other parts of the gameplay, like the actual platforming? Well, there are a ton of different levels with their own minigames, offering a nice variety to keep your attention. Honestly, I thought it was cool to see all the worlds in their own platforming style, so at least the backgrounds looked cool. The bad part is that no matter where you are, obstacles are too easy to get through, and everything can be avoided with certain characters jumping over stuff. The level design doesn't really give you the chance to think at all, just spam buttons and you're good to go! That might be fun for a 5 year old, but anyone looking for a genuinely fun cartoon arc experience probably won't find it here. Now I've been going on and on about what makes Punch Time Explosion bad, but you know what? There's still a small redeeming quality. I emphasize the word small because this pales in comparison to everything else. Still want to mention it though. Every so often throughout the game, when you're entering a new world or coming across a new character, there's a special cutscene. It may not be the highest quality possible, especially when we're comparing it to Subspace Emissary, but come on, you gotta admit this is kind of fun to watch. It's the lovable characters interacting with each other yet again, something that hasn't been relevant in more years than I want to admit. Wow, this capsule is surprisingly roomy on the inside. There's only one universe left. I wonder what it is. <laughs> Whoa, check out the dress on this guy. Remember that this released in 2011, meaning the city era was gone, and CN was moving away from that kind of stuff. To see it return in a random 3DS game felt like a blast from the past, even if the cutscenes were one of the only good things about it. I think the most disappointing part of Punch Time Explosion is that it had all the pieces in place to be incredible. For any old school fans who loved playing Smash, this was the absolute dream combo. But even with everything ready to go into the concept potentially being great, things clearly took a wrong turn at one point, and this barely made anyone happy to play. You could tell just from watching that it didn't have anywhere near the same polish of a big name video game, but then again, it makes a lot of sense. Think about it. Cartoon Network is extremely well known among kids, so all you have to do if you want to sell games is slap its name right on the cover. There's already name recognition for kids who walk by in the store. The game doesn't need a ton of effort because the characters do all the marketing themselves. But seriously, just imagine how this could have turned out with some extra time to make things better. I love Smash Bros. I love Cartoon Network, but uh, I really don't love Punch Time Explosion. It's going to the trash! So if we've learned anything today, it's that ideas can work really well on paper and then fail horribly in execution. I had so much hope for you. I wanted to have fun playing, but you didn't care. If anyone wants me, I'm going back to Ultimate. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and come up below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.